All right, everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to be doing part two of the last video. And before we get started, I want to show you guys a few things that I've done around my shop. All right, so as you guys can notice, up here I got a shop light, and I got one over here. Also one right there. But what I want to show you guys is I got all that shelving over there. Really nice. It's all cleaned up and it's all separated. While I got right here, just another shelving. I actually brought this stuff a lot higher than what it was before. Right, It was about right here before. So I just transported it over there and it looks a lot nicer. But what I'm going to start doing is like this little shelving over here. What I'm going to be doing is I'll create just spots where everything has its location. So drill bits and books and nails can go there. I got that for right there, bolts, and I'm not going to be needing that anytime soon, but I got my linseed oil and just other stuff. We're going to, I'm going to put my other oils there too, but what I have over here and while I was putting up shelving, this actually came in a lot of, it helped a lot. It's a charging station and I can just simply put my drill in. I got spare battery and once it's charged, it'll be good to go, but it's there just because I do a lot of screwing and stuff. All right, so today we're gonna to be using all these tools laid out on this bench, and I'll show you guys the order of what we're gonna be doing it. So we're gonna start with putting our jaw vices in our vise, and then what we'll do is put our X handle in it so the blade will actually be exposed. And then right here, I'll show you guys in a minute, a little more in depth, is a crosscut, or it's a spe Atkins special crosscut file. It's the only one that can actually cut my X. And I don't think we're going to be using this stone today because the crosscut file is actually really fine. Then I got a, around a 640 grit, which will probably go straight into. And then I have a block for sharpening with 1000 grit and next to it's a 2000 grit. And I have my leather, which we'll strop it with. All right, so here's the special crosscut file I was wanting to show you guys, and it's a special crosscut on the back, but it's an Atkins Silver Steel Made in USA. So the file's really nice. One side's rusted, a little bit gone, but this side's really nice. All right, so I'm just gonna start off with the smaller bevel ending, and It'll be a really quick job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file both sides of this side. And then I'll file the other side. And then I'll switch to hopefully my thousand grit. So I'm going to do each step step by step. And I'm not going to go file this side sharp, or use the stone and then switch to the other side. I'm just going to get all the filing done, 
and then all the other stuff done. And it should go fairly quick because this is a pretty new file and it's a really nice one. It's meant for the hard saws, so it'll it's really aggressive, but if you guys see, it is super fine with its work. So just do rough amount you are looking for, which is pretty much done. Just gotta work on this back end a little bit more and I'll be ready to switch the sides. If you guys can see the burr is sticking up on all sides or on the other side so that means it's time to switch all right so now the other side's done. We're gonna do the bevel end, and I didn't show the this side being done because you guys can't see it. It's over here. So I'm just gonna start filing this big end, big bevel. I'm gonna try to keep my file straight as can be because I don't like the rolled edges nearly as much. So that's taken a really nice polish to it. It's already actually really shiny if you guys can see that. And I think we'll be done with each side taking around 15 minutes. So total of 30, which is not bad. Just working on this slower part. Files getting a little clogged, it's just clean enough. All right, there's bevel all the way on the bottom, all the way across which means we are done with this side. Now for the sharpening. All right, so we're doing it with 1000 grit and hope, or the 640 grit. And hopefully we don't have to go back to like a 200 grit. That would be the worst possible. And that right there is looking really good. I'll do a little bit more on my own. But we're going to switch on to the smaller side, low angled. And I don't know what it is about it, but if you guys do a lot of research on, or even just watch videos on YouTube of people sharpening axes, what always happens, I'm not saying, I don't speak every time it happens because there's people that do it properly, but majority the actual blade part doesn't get polished it's only this main steel so it might look super sharp but it's actually super dull compared to how it could be so always just touch up on that blade just hit it really slightly 
and don't go super steep. Just glance right over it till you can hear it just touching the blade. So it'll make a different sound. So, because a lot of people they do, they round their blades a little bit more. Where mine, I try to get it straight, but even if I get it perfectly straight, I'll still just hit a little bit of the edge just to make sure it's sharp. Even before we're starting with the stones, you can just see it looks sharp. Now, it's not sharp completely, but it is to a good extent. But with this 640 grit, this will be sharp enough for most. But I like my axes to the point where you glance something or you just barely skim it and it will cut right through it. Alright, so as of right now, I have roughly 20 minutes on this axe, and that includes having to change camera angles and setup and all that. So it's actually probably only taken me around 15 minutes. So you have uh, about 5 minutes to change angles and all that. Yeah. But one of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to paraphrase, and I might be butchering it because I haven't heard it for a while, it is by Abraham Lincoln, and it's, if I had, I think it's seven hours to sharpen an axe, or chop down a tree, I would spend six hours sharpening it, and one hour cutting the tree down. So... 15 minutes right now if I was to spend six hours sharpening it how do you think this axe would turn out would it be that scary sharp where you barely touch it and it will cut your finger probably I have a stone a glass stone that I don't even know the grit it puts it the best polish on the axe but I have to use like a 8,000 grit to get to that stone just because well it's so fine it's like using a 2,000 grit right after you use a file you can see all the lines from if I was to use a 2,000 grit in the final product of the what I call a mystery stone because I have no clue what it is. And I'm just making sure I get a little bit of that blade each time. And this is really having a nice polish. This is a thousand grit if I didn't already mention that. And it already makes it shine. And there's a few scratch marks. But I'm not worried about scratch marks on the main steel. I'm worried about scratch marks on the blade. So, big difference. One is for looks. One will affect the actual axe itself. Alright, so... This 2000 grit is where things really start to change. Color and the reflection all look really nice on the axe by this point. Now the 1000 grit does do a good job, but it's not a mirror polish. With 2000 grit, it's, it is a mirror. And it is really good looking.
This is probably my favorite grid to work with. It's quiet. It's hard to mess up with if you do the other ones properly. All you have to do is run your hand up and down, up and down. That's all there is to it. Change a little bit of angles and there's not much to it. This is where it starts to get super, super sharp and where you have to be a little extra careful. The other stuff you have to be careful, but nothing like this. This will take your finger right off. All right. About 25 minutes in and it's time to switch to the other side. All right, so we're done for sharpening. We'll stop it in just a second, but before we do anything, we need to dry everything so it doesn't rust on us because we just put time into this blade. Maybe you spend more time, maybe less. But either way, you put your personal time into an axe, or at least I did. I don't know if you guys are doing it. So just make sure it's as dry as you can get it. All right, for the stropping, here's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna take the X out for now. I'm just gonna carefully set it off to the side, nowhere near any metal or anything like that. And I'm gonna bring the rough side of my leather into my vise. I'm gonna press on the top, make sure it clamps in really nice. I'll make sure it's nice and tight. I'm fine with it being loose because it'll actually cover the blade a little bit more. All right, so I'm just gonna do some smooth strokes and I'm gonna make sure I cover the entire blade while doing all these motions. And the reason I'm not pushing really tight it's because I have a blade facing my arm, so I don't wanna have my hand accidentally slip and injure myself. So I'm just gonna take it slow. Take a look at it. Looks very nice, very polished. And we will switch to the finer after we do all the other sides. All right, so now I've got my fine leather and we're doing the same thing. And at the end, I'll show you guys just how sharp this ax actually is. All right, so for our first test, we have a fine piece of leather. All right, I can't show you guys two angles right now, but I am pressing lightly. Like, I'm not even pressing pretty much. And it is just wickedly sharp. And it sliced that. I'll do this one-handed with no pressure at all. And it sliced through almost all of it. There we go. So that's pretty sharp. All right, so I'll do another test for you guys. And So those are fine shavings and barely pressing. Oh, 
that right there is a sharp, sharp axe. I don't think it gets, well, it definitely gets sharper, but do you need it sharper? Definitely don't need the small angle sharper. But man, is it sharp. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys haven't seen part one, go ahead and click the link and I will see you guys on the next video. But don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you guys later.